over until it is over. Mm -hmm. So we will keep upping our game. There is need for us to uh, upgrade some of the equipments we are using. There is need for us to enhance our mobility for our security forces. It boils down to the budget, you know? Mm -hmm. And that is why I am really focused on sorting out the economy, because that way we will have the resources to sort out our roads, to mm -hmm. sort out our security, <coughs> and to sort out the things that are dear. See, as Kindiki okay. uh, says, and I quote, we cannot afford to have a country where citizens live in constant fear and we will not spare any effort, even if it means using the KDF. The Constitution dictates that the KDF are then released only as a last resort and, of course, to restore peace, but with approval of the National Assembly. Article 241, 3C of the Constitution is the banditry menace as bad and severe said that the government would consider KDF. It is serious, but it hasn't reached the threshold for us to go to parliament to get KDF involved. We, however, are sharing information, you know, from intelligence from all sides. We are sharing uh, facilities and resources, you know. Um, and in some of the uh, areas, we are, we are making the decision that it's good to have security installations in some of these areas. Like, for example, in that whole North Rift, we're going to have some of the training facilities for our security agencies to cement government uh, presence in some of those areas and to make sure that whenever we need to deploy, we are not deploying from afar. So there will be, for example, a garrison being built up by the army in Lodwa. There will be another garrison uh, that will be built in, uh, in the Suguta Valley mm -hmm. to make sure that people feel, you know, because security is also presence, you know, real presence. So we are deploying, <coughs> sorry, all manner of uh, um, interventions and strategies to make sure that we manage our security. As, Why don't we have a commission uh, that, uh, of course, a commission of inquiry that then would look into the extrajudicial killings now that you mentioned the Rivayala cases and as well the involvement of Ipoa and Imnus and all that. I already had a thorough meeting with uh, Ipoa and we have agreed with them that it is not necessary for me to establish another task force when Ipoa is there and it is squarely within their mandate to tell us how did Kenyans end up being killed in this manner. And then it was business as usual. 30 bodies in Yala, there's 17 bodies in Garissa. I don't know how many bodies were. You know, people, you know, we, we, there, there, was a, there was a container here at the, at, at the Nairobi area where people were being slaughtered in a police station. How did we end up there? You know, what, ki what, kind of, what, what kind of rogue, you know, institution? And that is why I fired that Kenoti man, you know? Because, I mean, it's, it's not right, good people. Should there be responsibility more than just firing? Of course, there will be responsibility. He did not resign? You fired him? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have another. <laughs> okay, can, 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 can we move this forward, Your Excellency? Yeah. Yeah, since you're talking about uh, security and talk about regional peace, we have involved in DR Congo, we have interest in Somalia. What's our game plan? What exactly are we doing in this? <coughs> uh, smart. We, uh, as a country, and uh, maybe many Kenyans have been wondering, uh, I have been to DRC, I have been to uh, um, Uganda, I have been to uh, Ethiopia, I was in um, South Sudan. You know, Kenya has the largest economy in this region. And we have huge interests in the stability of this region.